Hello and good afternoon. My name is John Kennedy. I am the International Manager for the UTS University of Technology Business School here in Sydney, Australia. Um, I'm going to talk through a little bit about um, the Business School and our Bachelor of Business program before handing over uh, to my colleague, Dr. Anurag Hingarani, who's the Director of the Bachelor of Business program here at UTS Business. He did a pre-recorded webinar with a colleague of mine uh, not too long back, and he'll discuss in depth the course structure and why the Bachelor of Business is a good option um, for your career moving forward. Before we get to Dr. Anurag uh, Hingarani's uh, section, I just want to touch on a few points uh, that I want to highlight about UTS and the Business School. Um, university of Technology Sydney is a young university, and uh, we're very proud of what we've achieved in our short time um, of existence. Um, and in fact, we've done incredibly well. We're actually the number one university in Australia under 50 years old. Um, and that's a ranking we're very proud of because um, we you know, produce amazing research. We've got great academics. Our graduates are doing great things uh, in all over the world. And that's helped us get this ranking um, very quickly uh, in our history. In terms of our employment, uh, the UTS Business School is number one for undergraduate employment among the major Sydney universities. That's a really big deal. I mean, if you're not aware of Sydney, if you've not been here before, Sydney's um, a big university town. There are a lot of major universities here. Um, and the fact that our Bachelor of Business and Bachelor of Management are considered you know, um, some of the best courses to get uh, jobs upon graduation and to help us get that number one undergraduate employment rate is a really big deal for us. Um, a lot of that to, is to do with you know, the quality of the courses and the quality of our academics. But it's also to do with the practical nature of our courses. And it's something that we've become very known for is that we try to develop our courses and deliver our courses in a way that's incredibly relatable to industry and incredibly practical. So the skills are there from day one. You're not just learning about subjects in a very academic way, you're learning about them in a way that applies to real life scenarios and situations. And employers have become very aware of how our courses are delivered and know that they can trust the graduates upon graduation to really enter the uh, workforce and get on with the job. So some of the key messages that I hope that you take away from today's session is that our courses are incredibly practical, which I've uh, talked about. So the Bachelor of Business is incredibly flexible and Dr. Anurag um, Hingarani will talk about that in his session. Um, we're very industry connected and that's part of our great reputation, helps obviously our rankings in terms of employability and there's great uh, professional recognition as part of the degree, which means that obviously the degree is assured in terms of its quality, but it also means that you can take the degree all over the world. You can return to Canada and and work there and it will be recognised, you can stay in Australia and the degree is recognised anywhere that you want to travel in the world, the degree is accredited and therefore recognised by industry players all over the globe. Importantly, this is a recent highlight, this is, um, um, just came out recently, is that our Bachelor of Business programme is now the most, has been uh, awarded the most in-demand business course for undergraduate students for the fourth year in a row. Um, now, this stat is normally focused on domestic students, so it's based on first preferences of students um, leaving their colleges and coming into universities. And for the fourth year in a row, our course was selected by domestic students in the state of New South Wales um, as the most popular bachelor business choice. We have really amazing academics in our business school and we're really proud of the work um, that they do. Um, recently, there was a, a national award ceremony held here in Australia, and one of our uh, academics from the accounting discipline, Dr. Amanda White, um, won a, a prestigious award for um, teaching excellence. I would really recommend that you do uh, a bit of research on Dr. Amanda White. I've put a link on the screen, which you, which you can have a look at. Otherwise, just Google Dr. Amanda White um, UTS. She does have a big presence online. She has her own YouTube channel. And what you'll get to see is um, just a glimpse of the type of teaching we do here at UTS Business and that practical nature. Um, and you get just to see the enthusiasm of the academics and the different styles of teaching uh, that goes on. Um, so check that out if you want to get a really practical sense of what it might look like to be a student with us at UTS Business. 
So today, the main focus obviously is the Bachelor of Business, and I won't go into too much detail on that because Dr. Hingarani will cover those areas. But just to let you know that at undergraduate level, we also have um, a Bachelor of Management. The Bachelor of Management is different to the Bachelor of Business because it concentrates on kind of experience-based um, industries. So you're building in kind of business knowledge and management knowledge, um, but you're combining it with specific areas such as events, and the sports business, which is obviously a massive growing area, uh, tourism and digital creative enterprise. We were the first university um, to offer digital creative enterprise in Australia, and it's a really great combination of business techniques and creative um, solutions uh, and using technology as well uh, in a creative way. And finally, we also have the Bachelor of Economics. Part of that practical thing that I touched on earlier is that internships are possible um, in all of our undergraduate programs and they're offered in all our semesters um, uh, throughout the year. There's a lot of support in terms of finding a internship. We have a dedicated internship team within the business school and they can help guide you on how to approach companies, what companies are looking for, um, help with kind of CVs and uh, interview skills all the kind of practical things that you need to be able to approach a company and secure that you know, internship. They do promote internships as well. They do have internships that they'll offer um, um, through internal kind of promotion, but mostly the onus is upon the student to find that internship. So you can approach any company of any size um, here within Sydney. You can actually do international placements as well if you choose to, if you want to, um, but it is upon the student to do that, but we fully support the student in finding that placement. We do think, finding the placement is an important learning curve. So we don't want to hand down um, or you know, just give out internships. It's a really important skill and confidence builder for our students to be able to go out there and get those internships uh, themselves, albeit fully supported by us in the background. For the Bachelor of Business, which we are focusing on today, the internship option is an elective uh, option, and that's the same for our Bachelor of Economics program. If you do choose to go into the Bachelor of Management, um, that's a compulsory subject. So you will have to do an internship to be able to complete the program. I think a lot of universities um, like to talk about their industry connections, um, but it is something that UTS is particularly known for. Our campus is in the heart of uh, Sydney City and uh, Sydney is the kind of financial and commercial hub um, of Australia. So a lot of the major headquarters of major industries and actually smaller companies, small medium enterprises and you know, startups are all based um, very close by near campus. A lot of our academics have come directly from industry and working within the school. Um, and through that, we've got these amazing industry connections. And on the screen, you'll see just a few of the connections that the, uh, the university is working with or the school in particular are working with in a very particular way. So these are companies that students have gone on internships to. Um, some of these companies may be helping guide our curriculum and helping design our courses to make them as practical as possible. And some of them may be working with us on research projects as well. But all of the stuff that we do with industry does feed down into a really practical learning experience for our students. We have various industry figures that come in and talk directly to our students on various trends and really practical practitioner-based um, topics. Um, and there are various events and networking opportunities to engage with industry throughout the degree. Okay, all that being said, um, as a brief kind of introduction to the you know, university and the school, I am going to hand over to um, a session that was recorded with Dr. Hingarani, who is the director of the Bachelor of Business program here at UTS Business. And in this talk, um, you'll, he'll go into much more detail about the Bachelor of Business and his structure, um, but we'll also talk to some students who um, are currently going through the Bachelor of Business on their experience and why they chose the Bachelor of Business. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Today, where we'll be talking about the Bachelor of Business here at UTS Business School. My name's Rachel and joining me is Dr. Anurag Hingarani, who is the Bachelor of Business Director, Jasmine, who is studying the Combined Bachelor of Business, Bachelor of Creative 
of Intelligence and Innovation, and Patricia, who is studying the Bachelor of Business, Bachelor of Laws. One of the questions we get asked all the time is, what's the difference between business and commerce? Is commerce more finance-centred? Is there an actual difference? Hi, Rachel. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this webinar. Um, Rachel, that's a very good question, especially since um, I think we are the only one in the Sydney area that refer to the course as Bachelor of Business rather than Bachelor of Commerce. Really, there is no difference. The content is the same. Um, I would say that the Bachelor of Commerce as a name is somewhat narrow in, narrow in scope. Um, because you know you don't own a commerce, you own a business. So that's probably why we retain the name that when you're talking about activities related to the buying and selling of goods, which is commerce, um, there are other activities associated with that. Uh, one of those activities is managing people, human resource management, which the term commerce doesn't necessarily capture. So essentially both Bachelor of Business and Bachelor of Commerce are the same degrees. Um, we've just retained the name uh, business because you own a business, you don't own a commerce. So how do students decide which course to choose? So the content of the various degrees is essentially the same, they're similar. Um, I think it comes down to uh, a variety of factors. It might be a lot of individual factors. So for example, we would say location is important to some people, uh, some students. Um, also, we are located where business occurs, so that might be a consideration. For me, I would say when I was a student, um, a lot of times I made my decisions <laughs> based on what my friends did. So it is likely that you might be making decisions uh, such as where to go for your Bachelor of Commerce or Bachelor of Business based on where your friends are going. Um, and if I may say so, um, we get the most uh, number of first preference applications. So what that means is many students are applying to UTS for the Bachelor of Business course. So chances are that many of your friends are planning to join us. So that might be something to consider as well. Also, um, reputation. Um, I know many of the universities have a variety of uh, accreditations, but we are also proud of our accreditations and recognition that we have received from a variety of professional bodies. Um, for example, the Australian Human Resource Institute, the Australian Marketing Institute. So a reputation is of course important. Um, and at the end of the day, I think, once you've do, done your research, you'll have a clearer idea of what you want to do and where you want to study as well. So there's a variety of factors. It's, I know it's very individual, but these are some of the things that come to mind. Patricia, what were you looking for in a business degree when it came time for you to choose your UAC preferences? Thanks, Rach. So I guess back in um, high school, the thing that really drew me to uh, UTS and the business course here was flexibility. I think the really good thing about um, the Bachelor of Business is that in your first year, you have this whole year to kind of experience the different, I guess, subjects which are on offer at the Bachelor of Business. And that kind of leads into, you know, what majors you could potentially choose to do in your um, last two years. And I think that was a really good, um, I guess, distinguishing factor from other universities because you really had that first year, the entire year to kind of try out things and really consider your options before making, I guess, a commitment to, you know, either a finance, accounting, marketing, or whatever major you decided to do um, in, you know, your second and third year. So that was a really, I guess, good selling factor for me when I was considering um, what course to choose. Now, Anurag, you mentioned that a Bachelor of Business isn't more or less finance-centred than a Bachelor of Commerce, um, but we, in fact, span every field of business within the Bachelor of Business, don't we? Yes, that's correct, Rachel. We do cover every aspect of business, accounting, economics, finance, management, marketing, all of them. And in fact, um, if students are interested, you can drill down further and specialize in areas such as human resource management, international business, advertising as well. So yes, we do cover every aspect of business. 
Anurag, so both you and Patricia have mentioned that you don't need to choose your major straight away. Can you talk us through how the course works? Sure, Rachel. So the first year, students complete a set of eight subjects. It's uh, their core subjects. Every student has to do it. So if you were thinking of majoring in accounting, um, you don't have to make that decision. You do not make that decision, in fact, in the first year. So if you are thinking of majoring in marketing in the first year, you'll have to, uh, in accounting, sorry, you'll have to do marketing, you'll have to do economics, you'll have to do finance. So in the first year, all students do the same set of eight subjects. Those subjects include accounting, economics, finance, marketing, management, um, integrating business perspectives, which is a subject that is unique to us, where you learn how the different discipline groups such as accounting, economics, finance, management, marketing are interrelated. Do not have to make a decision in the first year at all, okay? It's only in the second year that you start making a decision about a major that you need to uh, complete or embark on. So in the first year, the decision is made for you. You do not have to make any decisions. You've got to do a set of eight subjects. And then towards the end of the first year, you've got to start thinking about the kind of uh, major or area you want to specialize in. And then because it's a three year full-time course, uh, we have a variety of different options for you in terms of how you can structure the Bachelor of Business course. Patricia, what are you majoring in? And did you know that's what you wanted to major in? How did you make that decision? I'm currently majoring in finance. And I guess to answer your question, I didn't really know that I wanted to major in finance in my first year. I think when I started off um, my degree, I was thinking maybe I'd be majoring in accounting or even something like marketing or HR. And I didn't do, I guess, the finance, um, the first year finance subject until my second semester. So I didn't really know anything about, I guess, like the major itself. But I think after, you know, experiencing all the different subjects that I did in my first year and doing the finance subject, I was really drawn to it. It was like the subject that interested me most. And I think that um, that was kind of the reason, obviously, why I chose to major it, uh, major in finance as opposed to um, the other disciplines like accounting or marketing. So I didn't really know, I guess, in the beginning, but I think after actually going through all the different subjects and doing finance itself, it really helped me make my decision. What are some of the ways that students can tailor their degree to their interests? So there are five different ways in which students can structure their course. So the first year, everyone does the same set of core subjects. Then in the second year, everyone embarks on a major. But then you might decide to either do a second major, that is one of the options that are available. So for example, you might have marketing as your first major, and then some of you might decide to do finance as a second major. So that is the structure you have opted for, doing two majors. So for example, a marketing student who's also doing a finance major with, when they graduate might decide to marry the two together and work in a marketing role for a bank, for example. Or they might decide they just want to focus on the marketing side of things or the finance side of things. So they're applying only for marketing jobs or finance jobs. So, Interestingly enough, having told you this, not all students uh, opt for this structure where you can do two majors. Another option that students can uh, consider is that they don't do two majors, but they do a major and two sub-majors. The sub-majors are basically what we call minors. These are half majors. So for example, again, using say a marketing student, a marketing student might do a marketing major, a finance sub-major, and perhaps um, a management sub-major. So they're getting a taste for finance and management by doing sub-majors, but they're not doing a full-blown finance major. Now, what might happen is that, um, let's say someone has started the first structure that I talked about, where you can do two majors, a marketing major and a finance major. Let's say someone has started the finance major and then decides that, mm, no, that's not for them. Um, so depending on the subjects they have completed in that finance major, they can convert that into a sub-major. 
Of course, these are details that we will tell you once you join us, but this is just to give you an idea um, in terms of how flexible the Bachelor of Business is. Another option is where everyone does the first year core, of course, you start on a major, and instead of doing a second major or two sub-majors, you decide you want to do a sub-major and four free electives. Now, again, using the example I've started with marketing as a major, you might have marketing as a major, finance as a sub-major, and then the four electives could be from anywhere in business school. And when I say free electives, they're not free, they're unspecified electives, which means you can uh, choose, I don't know if you're interested in uh, visual design, um, if that's a course that's available. If we had horse riding as an elective, perhaps you could even do that. That's what we mean by free elective. It's not necessarily connected um, to the Bachelor of Business only. So that's another option. Now this structure where students are doing a major, a sub-major and four electives is an option taken by some students who want to study abroad, uh, go on exchange. So that's a, another consideration. Uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, we will soon be able to travel and that will be an option that you would be able to uh, consider or take up. Then we have two more options, bear with me. Um, another option is where students might decide they're really interested in marketing and they don't want to just do a major. So this option is called an extended major. So an extended major is 12 subjects, a major is eight subjects. So if students decide on an extended major, then they cannot do a second major. The structure doesn't allow you to do that. But one option is that if you do an extended major, then you could do a sub-major or a minor with it. So you might do an extended major in marketing and you could do a sub-major in finance, for example. And the last option is also one with an extended major where you do an extended major, but instead of a sub-major, you do the four free electives. So in summary, I know this is a lot of information. Uh, this is information that's available on the website and you don't have to make any of these decisions in the first year, but to summarize, there are five different options. So you can do two majors, you can do a major and two sub-majors, you can do a major, a sub-major and electives, you could do an extended major with sub-major and you can do an extended major with electives. Jasmine, how did you choose to structure the business component of your degree? As Anurag talked about, you can choose to do two full majors, which is actually what I started in. Um, so I picked to go with the example, a marketing major and an economics major. And I was intending to complete those two full majors. But what happened was I started my economics major and I decided that I liked it, but I also wanted to try the sub major called management consulting. So I opted into the management consulting sub major and I converted my economics major into a sub major after the first year. So in my first year, I did marketing and economics subjects. And now I'm in my third year, I'm doing marketing and management consulting subjects to finish off my degree. So in the end, I ended up with a marketing full major and a sub major in economics and management consulting. Anurag, is there a requirement to uh, have done a particular level of maths to be able to successfully complete the Bachelor of Business? Well, the short answer is maths is not a prerequisite for the Bachelor of Business. However, there is some assumed knowledge. Um, what I tell students is, um, do you know what is a mean, median mode? Um, if you know that, um, that's the level of maths you would need to know. But interestingly enough, um, even if you don't know what is a mean, median, and mode, for example, you will be taking a course in business statistics in the first year, and you will learn about a mean, median, and mode again. Um, Although maths is not a prerequisite and there is assumed knowledge of maths, if you need support, 
we have uh, support available to you in the form of bridging courses, which are free to business students. So you have bridging courses in algebra, in calculus, um, as well as there is something called UPASS, um, which stands for Peer Assisted Study Sessions. And that is something you will explore once you join us, but there is support available to you. And again, the short answer is maths is not a prerequisite. It's a really interesting point that we make. I personally did three unit maths when I was in high school and I ended up going into the business statistics subject that we spoke about. And I found that sometimes I'd be sitting next to someone who'd only done general maths at school and a completely different syllabus. And they in fact knew a little bit more about this mean medium mode type maths than I did because I hadn't done it since maybe year 10. And so for me, I found that there was a mix of stuff that I had to reteach myself. And there was also stuff in there that I knew already. And I guess among the class, there was a difference in knowledge, but basically the teachers will take you through it from the beginning to the end. So if there's something that you need to be retaught, you will get to pick it up during the course. And also there are those peer assisted study sessions you can go to. And that's exactly what I did for the business statistics subject. I was someone who did quite enjoy maths in school. And so I did do three units of it, but I still got to university and I wanted to make sure that I really understood all of the elements of the course. And so I made sure that I understood that all before I went into the final exam and I ended up doing well. A lot, a lot of the students in my class as well did well with me. So as we can see on the slide, there are so many options that you can combine the Bachelor of Business with. Um, laws, engineering, science, IT. But depending on the course you want to do, there are implications for the structure of your degree. Now, Jasmine, you're doing business and creative intelligence and innovation. Can you talk us through how your degree is structured? Sure. So for the first three years, um, I'm pretty much a standard business student throughout the semester. So in autumn and spring sessions, I go and I just do four business subjects in both of those semesters. But what happens for me is in order to get some of my creative intelligence and innovation, we, we nickname it BCII, the degree. So in order to get my BCII subjects done, we do two schools in the summer and winter. They're basically two week intensives to get one subject done. So for example, on Monday, I'm going to start a, one of my intensive schools. So we go Monday to Friday, every day in the week, usually around nine to five, we'll do our learning and there's some assessments in that. And so after the two weeks, we have one whole subject done. So for the first three years, I do a normal business semester and a short intensive. I do another normal business semester and then another short intensive, which gets me through a whole year of that double degree. And then by the end of the first three years of my degree, I've done six BCII subjects and I've finished my business degree. And the fourth year in my double is completely composed of BCII subjects and some industry work within that. So next year, when I move into my fourth year, I will not have any business subjects left. I'll completely finish my business degree. I will just have BCII subjects left. Um, and so that is a bit of a different course to many of the other doubles, but that's how we fit in all of our subjects for both degrees into the one four year block. Now, Patricia, you're doing business and laws, and that's quite different in terms of how the degree is structured in terms of duration, number of majors you can do. Can you talk us through how your combined degree is structured? Yeah, so um, our st uh, structure is, I guess, a bit different to um, something like the Bachelor of Business and BCII with the Bachelor of Business with the Bachelor of Laws. It's a five year double degree. And what's a bit different is that we only get one major as part of the Bachelor of Business component. So for me, I'm only majoring in finance as opposed to having, say, a um, major in finance and two sub majors. I don't get that, I guess, extra you know, amount of subjects to choose any sub major or electives as part of my Bachelor of Business. Um, and in terms of the Bachelor of Laws, I guess, side of things, there's really no compromise there. It's still a full Bachelor of Laws degree that you would get if you were studying as a single degree as well. Um, and yeah, I guess in terms of structure, it is a bit different. You know, we don't have any, I guess, intensive courses. Everything's done in the autumn and spring semesters, but there is an optional, you know, summer semester, which is, I guess, available to all other students in other degrees as well. What exactly does professional accreditation mean and uh, what are the benefits for our students? Yes, Rachel, um, 
I talked about professional accreditation earlier on when I was talking about reputation. Essentially, accreditation is a form of recognition or endorsement uh, by several local professional associations and bodies, um, such as the Australian Human Resource Institute, Australian Marketing Institute, for example. And we have received those uh, endorsements, if you will, uh, because these associations have found the Bachelor of Course to be relevant for the professions. We are delivering uh, relevant education for the professions. Now, sometimes it's the whole course. Um, sometimes it might be a subject. Sometimes it could be a major that has received accreditation or endorsement. So the benefit for students would be that uh, when they are looking for employment, um, employers know that they have come from a university and they've done a course which has been recognized by the professional bodies and associations. I know many of you are just thinking about your undergraduate education, but maybe in the future you might want to do master's level study, uh, maybe at uh, an international university. Of course, we'd like you to do it with us, but if you're considering postgraduate study at another university, um, the fact that you've done um, your studies, your undergraduate, your Bachelor of Business with us uh, will hold you in good stead because they would know that uh, the local professional bodies have um, recognized our course. I should also mention that we currently also have the recognition of uh, our courses by AACSB, which is the Association to Advance Collegiate Schools of Business. That is a global body which endorses uh, courses. So coming back to my point about wanting to do a master's course down the track, um, maybe you're doing it in some country that hasn't heard of UTS uh, or the UTS Business School, they would definitely have heard of AACSB. So that will hold you in good stead as well. So in short, um, the fact that we have received this professional accreditation means that we're delivering relevant education, education that is relevant to the profession. What opportunities are available for students to engage with industry? So firstly, we are located um, in the, close to the Central Business District uh, in Sydney, but also the fact that we have uh, lecturers and tutors who work with industry partners. Many of our tutors are actually working in industry. So they're bringing their industry knowledge also into the classroom and students can interact with them in that sense as well. Um, we also have courses that are developed uh, via consultation uh, with industry, and that is also true for um, the Bachelor of Business. Um, students also have the opportunity to do electives, um, depending on what structure they've chosen or what major they've chosen. Students could also do an internship subject. And in that sense, you're also connected to industry. So these are some of the ways in which we are connected with industry. And just before we finish up, what would be everyone's top tip for a student that's considering studying the Bachelor of Business at UTS? The top tip for me, from me, would be to do some research. So you might want to research what's, what are some of the subjects um, or majors available in the Bachelor of Business. Now, I've told you before, you don't have to make a decision about a major in the first year. However, you know you will have to consider an area of specialization down the track. So go to our website, take a look at what's on offer, and you will find a list of majors. And within each major, you'll find a list of subjects. And within each subject, you'll find a description of that subject. Hopefully, once you've looked at those majors, um, you will get a clearer answer to the question, why am I interested in a Bachelor of Business? Now, I've talked about researching the majors um, by going to our website, uh, you might also want to research what, what uh, jobs exist by going to different job sites. And it's not about just looking at the titles, but looking at how those jobs have been described. And if you find those job descriptions appealing, then you will have greater clarity and be able to answer the question, why am I 
meaning you, the student, why am I interested in the Bachelor of Business? I think for me, if you're, if you're in a position where you're looking at a whole bunch of different universities, you're probably looking out there at a whole bunch of different degrees even, and you're not sure what to pick, my advice would definitely be similar to Anurag, definitely go and do your research, read into it as much as you can. And I know it can be overwhelming, but my advice and what worked for me was just to pick one that you think you'll like and go for it. Give it a try. A lot of universities and UTS especially are very flexible with changing your options even after you start a degree. Particularly the Bachelor of Business, it's a great one if you're not really sure what you want to do. As opposed to something like nursing, you don't graduate as a nurse. From a business degree, you can graduate and go into a whole number of fields. I think it's a great um, flexible option and it gives you opportunities in different areas when you graduate. Um, so I think if you're someone who's not really sure, and that's exactly where I was in your position, just think about what are the things you like now and how can that translate into a degree? And I would just recommend, just pick something you think you'll like, start it, see how you go, and there's always the option to change. Um, I guess my advice to someone who maybe has their heart set on the Bachelor of Business at UTS specifically, would be, I guess, to do some research on pathways. I know that was something that I was really stressed out about, you know, in year 12, thinking about whether or not I could actually, you know, get into the course that I wanted to do. And for someone who really wants to do the Bachelor of Business, at UTS uh, specifically, I know there are a bunch of different pathways, you know, aside from just the typical ATAR getting to uni, um, you know, pathway. There are a lot of different ways to actually get to UTS and study the Bachelor of Business. And I think doing your research, you know, while you're at, um, in year 12 really help, you know, relieve that, I guess, stress when, you, when it's coming to, you know, final exams and ATAR time, you know, just knowing that there are a lot of options to kind of get to where you want to be. So I definitely recommend having a look at different pathways, whether it be, you know, studying something else at UTS and trying to transfer your way in or going to TAFE and seeing if you could get your um, subjects credited that way. There are definitely a lot of options to ultimately end up at UTS and study business. This is just some information which I found useful when I was a student many, 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 many years ago. Um, if you're not sure of presenting or you're not comfortable with presenting, note that doing a public speaking course would be useful or just practicing in front of a camera, for example, would be useful. Uh, so bear in mind that there will be times when you have to present, even if you're an accounting student, for example. So use some time getting used to the idea of talking in front of a camera. Now I can tell personally, I'm more comfortable talking face to face. So I'm also getting used to the idea of looking at myself in front of a camera and making these wild gestures and trying to rein myself in. But I'm, t I'm the teacher, so it's not an issue for me, uh, but I would just suggest that try and get some practice. Uh, if you're shy, you're introverted, and you're not comfortable uh, talking, uh, you might want to perhaps see what, how you present or what you're presenting in front of a group of friends if you can't do a public speaking course. Thank you everyone for attending this webinar on the Bachelor of Business. We hope to see some of you, maybe all of you, um, in the Bachelor of Business uh, next year. And as always, make sure you do your research and if you have any questions, also direct them to the right people. Thank you very much for attending this webinar. Okay, I hope there was some useful information in there from uh, Dr. Hingarani. Um, there are ways that you can keep in touch uh, with the business school directly, and I've, I've put those um, on the screen there. Obviously, you have um, people that you can go through, uh, obviously, uh, in Canada as well, that you can talk to. There are various ways that you can connect um, with the school. That being said, I'm going to end the presentation um, at that point. Okay, great. Um, so, yeah, I think that's it for now. Thank you all very much uh, for joining. Anyone that's here or left, um, if you want to go back to the main uh, room to ask any questions, um, um, that'd be great. Otherwise, uh, I'm going to say goodbye for now and I hope you enjoy uh, the rest of your afternoon. Thank you very much.